Wondering what life is really like on Canada's wild and crazy West Coast? This podcast is all about the people, the places, and Vancouver Island time. Together, we'll explore this island paradise, a combination of ocean, city, and country living. We'll meet the fabulous locals such as the Fudge Fairy and the Chicken Lady who have chosen Victoria and Vancouver Island as their home. And we'll learn what makes this place unique and special to those who live here. And now, your host of Vancouver Island Time, Jane Johnston. Hi, everybody. It's Jane Johnston from Vancouver Island Time. I'm here with Ann Squires Ferguson, and we're going to be highlighting the area of Central Park, which is just north and east of downtown uh, Victoria. Often people think it's Fernwood, but we're actually just slightly west of that area. So tell me why um, you decided to highlight this area of the city. Well, this is a really unknown area of the city, I find. So it's close enough. A lot of our clients are commercial uh, properties in the downtown core. And we have great parking. We have great access to all of them. Um, but we're also close enough to the highway to get up to Sydney or out of town very quickly. Uh, and frankly, it's really inexpensive to be here. So um, we're right near the Save on Foods Memorial Center. Um, we're also right like in a kind of an old part of downtown Victoria. I consider it downtown Victoria. So we have uh, heritage homes in this area as well. Uh, what do you like about the lifestyle in uh, Central Park? Well, our staff love all of the restaurants. So, and they're little hole in the wall places. We've got Island Poke, we've got Momo Sushi. We're not even five minutes walk from Hudson Market. Uh, and so if you don't want to bring a lunch uh, and many of us rarely do, <laughs> there are lots of great options. Even the salad bar at Fairways is a great deal. Um, so what about uh, during game nights? Because uh, game nights or when they have concerts at uh, the center, what's that like? Uh, well, it certainly helps to have preferential parking, I have to say. Uh, and when we're not using it, uh, we have a lot of people who know that these spots exist. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's an added bonus for sure. I noticed that uh, they only have two hour parking on the street and then down the street they have residential parking. Is parking an issue for residents in this area overall, do you think? You know, uh, we always find parking on the street and our clients do as well, so it hasn't been an issue. We have parking here at the building, but, uh, but I haven't had anyone complain about it at all. What about the social life around this area? Do you guys uh, go out after work anywhere? I know... Um, Brasserie Le Col is not far from here. That is a favorite, I have to admit. My husband and I uh, enjoy the brasserie. Um, there's actually a couple of new restaurants, so Savour on Herald, which is uh, self-taught chef Rob Castles, is mind-blowing. I don't know if you've been there yet. And that's, that's the next brasserie. That's going to be a Victoria uh, icon very soon. So we enjoy that. Um, you know... <laughs> Sometimes it's not going out in that style, um, but I have eight-year-old twins, and there, there's a park right next to Crystal Pool with a array of fitness equipment. And so, if you're looking for a fun evening out with a pair of eight-year-olds, that is the highlight of their evening. And Crystal Pool obviously has a pool, but it also has uh, recreation programs, and um, there's also a basketball and tennis court, right? Yeah, absolutely. Lots of options there. And do you, so I consider this kind of be, to be like the design district when I'm thinking of downtown Toronto, I'm thinking Spadina. Do you find that as well? Uh, it's coming up. Certainly there is a Victoria design district uh, that's down off of government that's more residentially focused. Um, but uh, we have access to a lot of like office furniture showrooms and material showrooms that are more commercially focused in the area here. Um. What about in terms of like for someone residing here, what would you say are the benefits uh, to living in this area? So we're close to the Quadra village. We're close to the downtown. For someone who wants to move into the Central Park area, is it safe around here at night? Um, do you find it's a great neighborhood? Is there like, um, you know, are the people nice? 
You know, we uh, really appreciate the residents here. So uh, our building specifically is actually a seniors building and we're the one commercial space in it. Uh, and we really enjoy the relationship that we've developed with them, especially Vera, our gardener, um, who is incredibly enthusiastic. I'm sure you saw the courtyard. It's a work of art. Um, and uh, yeah, we're often not here in the evening, so I can't really speak to that specifically. But certainly we often take our, our health and wellness breaks and walk around the neighborhood and people are super friendly lots of young families uh, I think it's still very reasonably priced and lots of heritage homes with some really beautiful detailing and the ones that haven't been uh, brought up a lot of them are now in the process so it's neat to see that coming alive there's a lot of color and uh, it's quirky right eclectic yeah, that's a, that's the word. I had a listing on Dowler just down the street, and it sold for a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago for four hundred and nineteen thousand. I was looking it up. You would never get a house for that. We thought we were. Yeah, it would be double now, right? So those what those people said about living in the area was that all the neighbors came out and they partied together like um, street parties and uh, they had um, dinner parties with their neighbors. It's also um, a very welcoming community to uh, the gay and lesbian community, they were saying that. And, and a really high um, international population. So we see great diversity on the streets. And that's one of the reasons why I, my kids actually go to the school about four blocks over at George J. And uh, we adore that when they have multicultural day. There are over 40 different uh, cultures represented just at their school uh, and elementary school. It's really wonderful to have that diversity in Victoria. I don't know if you know, but I lived and worked at Pearson College. Oh, did you? <laughs> I love it. So we had 86 uh, countries represented with uh, 200 students. Yeah, more is better. And one of the reasons why I felt it was really important was because at that time, uh, that was up until five years ago, uh, it was quite uh, white bread, we call it, vanilla in Victoria. But now I'm finding it more and more multicultural. And it's I, what's the benefit is, is the food. So do you have like a favorite Thai restaurant or favorite Indian restaurant? I do. They don't, they're not all necessarily in the area. Little Thai place, of course, super popular. Um, there's a great Vietnamese restaurant in the, uh, Tilikum Mall in the bottom of Tilikum Mall, which is absolutely amazing and kind of a hidden pocket. Uh, and then over in that area has where Tilikum and Gorge, uh, there's also a great uh, Indian restaurant called Mantra, which is divine and caters to a lot of kid tastes as well. So you can get all the complexity with not quite as much heat. So, huh. so uh, in terms of getting out of the city from here and, you know, doing stuff that's fun, what what do you like to do? What do I like to do, Jane says. Um, I My family is super passionate about hiking. So we hike at least once a week and uh, and our hikes take us all over the area. Um, some favorites kind of close by, we do um, Gowland Todd, uh, which is a beautiful park and we right along the ridge there, incredible views. Lone Tree Hill out on the highlands, very popular. Uh, we often do Isuk Park and you can make that as long or as short as you want. That's usually the one we take uh, visitors on if we have family coming from Great Britain and we take them to East Souk Park. That's the, the ocean experience they're looking for. So. Plus you can see the petroglyphs there. Oh, I know. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? We never get tired of it. And then the mussel beds at low tide and the barnacles. And I mean, I, I'm still fascinated by tidal pools and I've lived here for 20 years. So, uh, which brings up a very fascinating point. Where are you from? <laughs> I grew up just south of the Yukon border in a very small town called Telegraph Creek on the banks of the Stikine River. And I hear you grew up in a place with no electricity. No electricity, no running water. Yes, we had a dog sled. No, we did not have an igloo. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, the funny part is my parents actually were originally from the United States. My dad grew up in Chicago. My mom grew up in Philadelphia. And so when they tuned in, turned on, dropped out, they went literally to the end of the road. And uh, growing up there, we were homeschooled. We had an enormous garden. We pumped our water from the river. Um, I didn't know that that was a non-standard childhood. It just, everyone I knew live that way uh, and now it's it's idyllic um, I wouldn't change it for the world 
Do your parents still live up there? Oh, they've moved south. Now they live in Prince George. <laughs> they've been gentrified. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so um, what's your favorite memory of that time? You know, uh, they're, they're all wonderful. I have to say, um, we had a descendant of our lead sled dog became our family dog. So Hank uh, looked like a husky or a German shepherd cross, um, but was about 150 pounds. And, uh, and I used to sneak him upstairs and uh, so put him on my bed and then cover him with my bedspread, convinced that my mother had no idea that Hank was sleeping uh, in my bed. And I think about it now as a mother, I'm like, I'm pretty sure she knew. <laughs> <laughs> and they would get obviously really hot if, they, if you did that yeah exactly right so pretty funny but so how did you end up why did you choose Victoria to live you know uh, a bit of an odd story so I actually came to Victoria I was posted here I was in the Navy uh, and living in Halifax my first degree is in um, electromechanical engineering and they asked for volunteers to come to Victoria I had never been and uh, i you know, I mean, you're in your early 20s and yeah, sure, pick me, I'll go. And of course, I got here and it's the promised land. It's magnificent. I actually came out when I was 16. I did an outward bound course in the interior and I got, I flown from uh, Toronto to Vancouver and there was um, nobody to meet me at the airport, 16 years old, never been alone before. And I had to find my way to YMCA. So I went to whatever that beach is, Rec Beach, which is a nude beach. <laughs> and I just thought as I took the bus to the interior that this is the most amazing place in the world. Yeah. You know, I still feel that way every day. We come to work and, and it's magnificent. You see the mountains and the air, you can smell the salt and, and the flowers are riotously beautiful. Yeah. And that's why you go to Eastwick Park because you're actually facing south and east and you can see the, the mountains and the water and you're, you're in nature. I remember thinking I was in Northern Ontario. It's magnificent. It really is. And it never gets old. So uh, I guess it was a promise to myself that, so did you get posted back and then you moved here eventually? No, I took my release and I stayed. I met a Victoria boy and uh, yeah, we're, we're immersed here up in Gordon Head. And so yeah, this is home now. So uh, do you find your family comes to visit? Are they, do they love wanting to stay here? <laughs> Indeed. In fact, I have lured my sister and, uh, and I'm confident we'll get a few more of the siblings down. So I've lured my brother and he thinks it's propaganda because I was uh, posting all these pictures of flowers in January and in, it was snowing in Toronto, but of course it wasn't, whatever. Yeah, it's, sometimes the truth hurts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And anything else you want to add about living in Victoria? What's the, you know, if you were to tell somebody I love Victoria because what would that, what would that reason be? You know, Victoria, we get all the best parts of the city. So we get culture and and wonderful restaurants and great educational opportunities. There's the opera and the ballet and there's so much culture and yet literally not even 10 minutes from downtown and you can just be immersed in nature. And I think it's that dichotomy that leads to really a wonderful work-life balance. Yeah, I agree. I went to school in Kingston and I just thought that was the ideal city. And then I did my teaching degree in uh, Fredericton, same thing. And then when I moved here, I just thought, okay, it's all that without the snow. <laughs> Need we say more? Do you miss uh, snow at all? You know, we dabble in snow, so we'll go up north and enjoy it for spring break. We spent in Yellowknife last year, and that was fun, and got the kids out on snow machines and dog sleds, and so they got that taste, and then we got back on the plane and came home. <laughs> and uh, sorry to digress, but do you go to, do you go up island? Up island's considered like the um, ski capital of Vancouver Island, so uh, Mount Washington? Not a lot. You know, it's interesting. Growing up so far north, we didn't have groomed ski hills. And so I'm more cross country and actually, dare I say it, uh, snowshoeing. So yes, not quite as popular as downhill skiing, but a lot more zen. <laughs> okay, well, there you have it. A little introduction, a little taste 
of Living in Victoria. When we come back after this commercial message, we're going to be talking about Anne's work with Western Interior Design and how she is uh, influencing design across the city. We'll be right back. Vancouver Island Time is brought to you by the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun Victoria, where we bring local expertise and global presence to your property. Hi everybody, it's Jane Johnston. I'm with Vancouver Island Time and today we're speaking with Ann Squires Ferguson, who is the CEO of Western Interior Design. So I initially met her a few years ago and have followed her career and been lucky to be in buildings where she has influenced the design and remodeling of uh, some older buildings uh, here in Victoria. So you were in the Navy, um, you come from uh, up north. How the heck did you <laughs> go from being, an, was an electrical mechanical engineer to a um, interior, uh, a commercial interior designer? Well, it's it's a straight line, I always tell people. And, uh, and after you get a degree in electromechanical engineering, you specialize in shipboard weapons, obviously. <laughs> and then you work in uh, the karaoke industry, designing high-end karaoke machines for the Asian market. And then you move into commercial interior design. So that's that's how that works. It actually makes a lot of sense. What's the theme that goes through them all? The theme is team. Uh, the theme is getting things done as a group and capitalizing on different people's strengths. And so uh, when I was in the military, I the team environment was wonderful and fun and and supportive um, but I wasn't really passionate about weapons and so I worked in the engineering world and we made these magnificent uh, karaoke machines if I can put those words together uh, and again the team environment was incredible and we would have a team that worked together sales and marketing and engineering and and soft skills for several years to produce a product and I love the fact that we produced a thing together uh, but I'm not that passionate about karaoke. There are people who are and meh. <laughs> uh, so I started doing a lot of research and uh, w the door to commercial interior design was opened to me by an instructor actually at Camosun where I was dabbling in various you know open classes to try and figure out decorative welding and pottery and this and that. And uh, she said, you know, you know that there's, uh, there's a profession that brings together the technical and the creative and the aesthetic and that team environment. Uh, and I think you may want to do some research and and uh, I do love me some research so when when was that what year that would have been in 99 probably then I moved back to Vancouver and got another degree this time in applied interior design okay so um you brought some some tiles with you so and velvets so tell us all about this you know uh what I tell people is our crayon box is the most exciting crayon box in the world and so over here we have palms of carpet so we custom design carpets for hotels restaurants resorts uh, using their signature colors and building their brand in so like hotel grand pacific is a client of ours all of their cu carpets are custom designed with their logo uh, we have commercial velvet so these uh, this is how you have velvet in a spa or a restaurant that can stand up to being sat on for 20 12 to 14 hours a day, literally hundreds of thousands of what we call double rubs. Uh, and the colors, I know, it's a thing. Uh, the colors are just magnificent. We have a lot of fun with textiles. Oh, I like the designs. Yeah, well, and we see things in the commercial market uh, several years before they start surfacing in the residential market. A lot of the product comes from Europe uh, and from Asia. I actually just came back from a trade show in Malaysia and Singapore. So there were twin trade shows over there in just a month and a half ago or so. So some really magnificent uh, textiles, and that's where we have some fun and add some softness. But a lot of our materials are actually in the constructed materials. So Western is unusual in that we are all interior designers, uh, but we're also project managers and procurement specialists. So what makes us different from other studios is that we build uh, what we design. Okay, so show me what you have here. This is very interesting. 
So we, we get to have some fun with materials. Uh, these are really fascinating materials. This is from an artisan that's here in Victoria. His name is Jim Barker, Barker Manufacturing. And uh, Jim is a Renaissance man, a former logger, and he's capable of producing some really magnificent textiles. So this is actually uh, Douglas fir that he has uh, used a CAD CAM machine to scoop an adzed texture out of. And then he sandblasted it to remove the softness of the wood. Uh, and then he has coated it with automotive paint. And so you actually see this in the bands of the dining room at Fifth Street. Very interesting. It's so light too. I know. Isn't it amazing? So. I thought these were, I thought these were metal. Okay, what else do you have? Um, so these are kind of interesting. Uh, we, of course, love natural stone. And so you can see natural stone. Uh, this is a sheet product. This is a tile product. I'm covering my face. Um, but uh, what's really interesting about these is that they are incredibly thin. Uh, and the reason that we can do that is because we have uh, stabilizers. So I don't know if you can see that, but this is actually... Uh, adhesive to a sheet of resin uh, and so we can have a very thin layer of onyx so that's a natural semi-precious stone uh, but we can use it and actually backlight it and so we can have leds behind that and pulsing light and uh, we do work with capital ballroom for instance and so right your job sounds like so much fun it's a lot of uh, then there are other materials. So this uh, marble is special because we actually have three colors of marble that are quarried here on Vancouver Island. And so this is Carmana Black Marble. It's available from Matrix. Uh, and they do an incredible job. They can actually, they carve this out of the stone, the mountainside in huge blocks. And then we can have three-dimensional objects. So if you can imagine sinks and fountains and carved here on the island, it never goes overseas. It never goes to Italy. So those are this is really quite heavy, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you'll see that as the countertops in Huntington Manor. So this is from Duncan. It is indeed. Okay. We have some fun with uh, space age materials, and so these are uh, from a company called Three Form that we work with. These are resins, and uh, this is recycled resin, and so it's been diverted from the waste stream. So we try and use uh, environmental uh, sustainable products in all of our projects, whether or not our clients ask for it. That one actually has a copper wire embedded in it. And so they do have some that are a standard. You can get them with wildflowers or seagrass, and they'll actually do a custom. So if you have some token, you know, a pressed flower from your wedding bouquet, we can have it um, pressed between sheets. And I love it. I know, I do too. <laughs> Uh, and we can custom tint so they have hundreds of their own tints or we can custom tint to match any client's logo so this is blue and then there's a green one do you want to show us the green one is that the same material is that a glass no. so this is this is kiln cast glass and so I'm going to turn it to the side so resin uh, is of course much lighter uh, and but it's not as durable and so we would use the resin panels for like with the shoreline orthodontics clinic we use the resin panels to uh, delineate space in their in their entryway uh, and now this is kiln cast glass this is produced in Vancouver again diverted from the waste stream and they lay it in a panel uh, and melt it so that you get that magnificent natural texture so how do you apply it because it's um it's it's curved on both sides I know so then you uh, tell them precisely where you want to put through holes uh, and they cast it to your specifications so it's uh, you can't see it yet but when the Victoria International Marina opens at the end of the month you'll see a pair of art glass doors like this with live edge maple handles that are magnificent the angels sing you can see her. she's promoting herself in here now we're gonna to have to find pictures of all these places uh, yeah well and you know the beauty of doing a lot of commercial work is that it is open to the public and and we really do enjoy that 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 any one of you can go and see our work but what's important is that we don't get to do these wonderful projects without having wonderful clients and clients that trust us and are engaged in the process and open up their businesses to possibility and so that's that's the really beautiful part about it and what we all enjoy the most is that relationship piece 
Okay, let's do one last thing and then you can tell us where um, we can go and see your work. Of course. You know, the last one that I wanted to show you, it's actually another from uh, Jim Barker, uh, from Barker Wood Manufacturing. And this is a personal favorite uh, where it's just a very simple, it's like pebbles in a stream. And... Uh, it's like pebbles in a stream. And uh, this is a personal favorite of mine. This it really uh, smooth, organic texture. We have a lot of fun with it. It reminds me of actually of sand to me. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like the ripples that naturally, anyone who adores the beach is going to respond to that. And we do find a lot of people come in and they just walk around the studio and pet things. For so they have an emotional response. That's exactly right. That's what we're trying to cultivate. So I have seen your work in uh, probably more places than I know, but I saw you in, um, you were in an apartment building. So you were redoing the lobby and all the hallways. And I was lucky enough to say, I know this person, so I know it's going to be fabulous. So where, where can we see you in public places? Yeah, well, we do a lot of the local hotels, so we have long-standing relationships with them and, and do design and procurement and construction management for them. So uh, Huntington Manor uh, and Pendray, which is fun, very boutique. Those rooms are just magnificent. Uh, and uh, Hotel Grand Pacific, of course. Uh, we used to do Harbor Towers. Now it's converted to residences. Um, and we've worked with Suzanne at the Oswego. And so, you know, in and out of a lot of those places, restaurants um, uh, of course Fifth Street I mentioned but uh, Fiamo on Yates is um, a long-term client of ours and and a lot of fun to work with Dave and his wife Alyssa and and so that's kind of a uh, yeah a favorite project always um, and then we actually do uh, a seniors living so assisted living we've worked with Luther Court and the Cridge Center and and um, a number of places like that we do health care so Acacia uh, shoreline I mentioned um, yeah it's we feel really blessed we've been able to work with a lot of the leaders in the business community and and we never take that for granted every every client is a vote of confidence so do you um, that's very well said by the way I, I'm just wondering do you have a pre-meeting with them and they talk about themes and then you come back with like three choices how do you how do you go from conception to implementation you know, that's a really great question and the answer is that it varies with every single client uh, and some clients the, the earlier in the process we can be involved the better um, because we can help them craft a solution that responds to all the criteria it's not just uh, superficial but uh, what we find is that once we start working with a client I mean people joke about it but they say oh you're stuck we're you know you're our designers for life and then that's very true uh, and my business partner Pauline has been fortunate enough to have uh, clients for decades and that uh, relationship where you get the call back you know two years five years ten years uh, and, and saying you know we we're evolving as a business we have a different demographic we're taking over a new space you know all of those things that's that's that process and how do we make decisions for you now that will be a reasonable investment for you and a reasonable rate of return because uh, as business owners we appreciate the pressure that all uh, of those in our community are under and so we really want to leverage the resources that they have and sometimes our best advice is save your money you you know you've got a thriving business and we'll come back in a year or two uh, when these things really need replacing it sounds exactly like real estate it, well where it's side by side we're very closely linked yeah, I find sometimes people want to change because they just want to change and you have to tell them it's not worth it's not worth your money right now to just change like you could maybe upgrade as opposed to change uh, your whole ho whole house. Mm -hmm. um, but so how often do people like their statistics around people moving? How often do people change the decor in hotels and other commercial? Is it like a 10 year cycle or what's a, what's the regular cycle? 
You know, it depends on how the space is used. Uh, and so restaurants and nightclubs have a shorter cycle uh, because they A, get a lot of use, but B, they're also very trend driven. Uh, hotels are a longer cycle. Uh, assisted living and multi-unit residential, so condominium towers, uh, are the longest cycle because it, it takes Stratus a long time to make those decisions or those non-for-profit board of governors. Uh, and those are the pieces that we're selecting that have to do uh, duty for 20 years plus. Yeah, I was going to say probably 30 years from some of the carpets I've seen. (laughs) So long that some of them are actually coming back into fashion. It's so true. The pink and green carpets. Oh my God. It's so true. But you know, we can see beauty in a lot of things that uh, that other people may not. And so that's actually happened recently where I was in a, a building uh, close to Beacon Hill Park and I went in and I said, oh, this carpet has to go. I'm like, actually, it's magnificent. It's red and it's covered in birds and flowers. And I'm quite fond of it. I'm, I would keep the carpet. I wouldn't. But anyway... <laughs> Okay, so we're at the end of our interview. Is there anything you want to share with anybody? How do we get in touch with you if we want you to come into our commercial space and redesign us? You know, uh, westerninteriordesign.ca is really easy. You're welcome to call or email me. Uh, Any one of us uh, tries to make ourselves available. And uh, yeah, we'd be delighted to serve. You are also on Facebook? We are on Facebook. Other people keep track of that, Uh, but I'm sure it's Western Interior Design. Okay. And are you on Instagram with any of your pictures or anything? Uh, I am personally Squires Ferguson. If you want to be obsessed with my running routine, you're welcome to join the party. Um, But, you know, it's interesting. We were just talking about opening a, a, a business account because we do some cool stuff. Yeah. And you're so visual. I think that would be a really good addition. Okay. So if you're interested, you can t- contact Anne at westerninteriordesign.ca. If you have any questions about the area of Central Park, you can contact me, Jane Johnston. I'm a realtor with the Briar Hill Group at Remax Camosun. And welcome to the neighborhood of Central Park in Victoria. Have a great day. Welcome to the neighborhood. We hope you have had some insight into West Coast living. If you know of someone or some place that should be highlighted in our podcast, we'd love to hear from you. Please go to VancouverIslandTime.com and click on our Connect button. See you next week on Vancouver Island Time with Jane Johnston. Do you feel like you're drowning in administrivia? Do you have a podcast you would like transcribed to repurpose as a blog or even a best-selling book? Rhonda's virtual office is the answer to the freedom you crave so you can get busy doing what you love. Let Rhonda's virtual office give you the relief you need. Visit rondasvirtualoffice.com and get some peace of mind today. Rhonda's virtual office is the go-to transcription service for EWN Podcast Network.